I'ma crush it. Call me. Hi, I'm Anthony Walker, your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. Today we come to you from Station Square, and you notice I'm looking a little shaggy in the beard area. Well, as of present day, the Pens are still in the playoffs, therefore I still have my playoff beard. We'll see how long that lasts. Dean Williams joins us today to introduce you to the Ban the Box initiative, aimed to assist formerly convicted citizens in finding employment. Later on in the program, we also have a special guest from the Fred Rogers Center. But first, let's take a look at what's happening with our area nonprofits. Henry Matisse's The Thousand and One Nights is a large multi-panel painted paper cutout. It is a visitor favorite, but due to its fragile nature, it is only on view for a limited period of time from April 7th to July 15th, 2012 at the Carnegie Museum of Art. The 1001 Nights was created in 1950 when the artist was 81 and confined to his bed. Unable to sleep and kept alive by his drive to create, Matisse had much in common with the legendary narrator of the Arabian Nights. She saves her own life from a vengeful king by enthralling him with a story that she always interrupts at a moment of suspense just after dawn, ensuring her survival through 1001 Nights. Like her tales, the 1001 Nights is a work rich in fantastic imagery and symbolism created during many sleepless, difficult hours. More information is available at cmoa.org. The Community Design Center of Pittsburgh invites creative young Pittsburghers ages 18 to 25 to attend a full day design charrette on Saturday, April 28th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. to imagine ways to connect the cultural attractions on the north side. The Surrette will begin at 8 a.m. at the New Hazlet Theater and then move to the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh. To register or for more information, go to cdcp.org. Three nonprofit housing groups facilitated by the Wilkinsburg Community Development Corporation have come together to form the Wilkinsburg Affordable Housing Coalition and will provide extensive renovation assistance to targeted homeowners in the Princeton Park and Park Triangle areas of Wilkinsburg. Rebuilding Together Pittsburgh, Habitat for Humanity of Greater Pittsburgh, and Wilkinsburg Christian Housing have all previously served Wilkinsburg residents. Renovation assistance will include weatherization, ramps and porches, or carpentry and painting. All recipients of assistance from the coalition will be homeowners who fit certain income and other criteria. Homeowners will be contacted for the opportunity to apply to the program. More information is available at WilkinsburgCDC.org. Now let's go to Christopher Whitlatch and Dean Williams to learn more about the Ban the Box campaign. Thanks, Anthony. We have a very special guest with us here at Unsung today. This is Dean Williams. Dean, who are you with? Hi, my name is Dean Williams, as he said. I'm the director of an organization called Formerly Convicted Citizens Project. Uh, we're basically a public policy organization that uh, works to eliminate barriers to successful reintegration for people with criminal histories by advocating for public policy change through new legislation. We're here at the Allegheny County Jail, standing out in front of it. How many people in, in the city of Pittsburgh are formerly convicted individuals? Um, it's estimated there are more than 70,000 people in the city of Pittsburgh that are burdened by criminal uh, histories. 70,000 people, and Dean's gonna tell you about how we don't want those 70,000 people to end up back here in the Allegheny County Jail because that costs the taxpayers money and that's not good for our community. And now I'm gonna turn the rest of the story over to Dean. Six years ago, I was convicted of uh, charges of position, uh, excuse me, uh, possession with intent to deliver. And I ended up doing a two year sentence uh, called state intermediate punishment, which allowed me to actually go through programs and gave me an opportunity to sit down and reflect on my life and the things that I was doing wrong and the things that I needed to do. So actually my situation really worked out for me because I was diligent and uh, quite frankly, I changed my life and gave it, gave it to God and just, I, I allowed God to counsel me through his word and through the spirit and it just, it just put me in the place uh, in the place that I'm in now, which it, it provided a fantastic opportunity for me. So a lot of times in the, in the workshops that I'm giving, I, I make sure that I speak to people about my journey, about the things that I've gone through and how I've changed and what I've done to change. And in addition to that, I, was, I also experienced a tumor in my cervical spine just four years ago. I was on the table in Allegheny General Hospital, uh, not breathing on the table. 
But through my spiritual conviction, I uh, developed the strength to get through. And now I'm doing things that the doctor said I wouldn't do. But a lot of it is because in addition to my diligence and my, my the discipline that I've acquired and uh, just the attitude, attitude change that, that I have about my life, uh, I've been able I've been able to put myself in a position to be able to provide for my kids and my family. And I'm at a, at a pretty good point in my life. And I think that there are a lot of people that are just like myself that are looking for job opportunities that really haven't have haven't had uh, violent crimes that have made bad decisions and, and bad choices in their lives and really deserve a second chance opportunity. And that's what we're working for. I run expungement and pardon workshops at two workforce organizations called Mon Valley Initiative and the Urban League of Greater Pittsburgh. And we've seen at least 700 people at those workshops. And primarily the people come to the workshops, not so much because they want their records erased, but they're looking for job opportunities and feel like the only way that they may possibly be able to get jobs is to have their records expunged or pardoned. They really don't have a clue as to how difficult it is to to uh, obtain a pardon or expungement, but the main issue being that they're looking for job opportunities. So basically, we're advocating for new legislation called Ban the Box, which would eliminate the criminal history inquiry off of, uh, off of all job application forms. That is not to say that, that employers don't deserve to know the, the applicants, you know, the past criminal history of the applicants that, that, are, that, that are applying for the jobs, but we feel like at the beginning of the application stage for them to ask that question automatically eliminates so many people from, the, from having possibilities, from, job, from having job possibilities or even be, being able to get an interview. Um, there are thousands of people who are aware that if they've, that they check that box, that they're automatically, they're automatically uh, discriminated against. So lots of people who have criminal histories won't even apply for jobs knowing that that box is on is, uh, is on the, on the job, job application forms. So we're endeavoring to, to make sure that we can at least level the playing field of people who've had past criminal histories by allowing, hopefully, uh, getting them a chance to at least get in the door and explain what they've done with their lives since they've had criminal history, uh, how they changed their lives, why they deserve a second chance, and, and why they're good for the job. Um, the problem with the box is that it doesn't discriminate at all from minor criminal history that have occurred 20 years ago versus violent criminal history that, that, that happened last month. And people change, people grow, and uh, they need opportunities to be uh, self-sufficient, productive citizens. Uh, and without having a job opportunity, it's impossible. We recognize that employers are not obligated to hire people formerly convicted, but if they do, it also gives uh, the city a better tax base, a larger tax base, because as opposed to paying for people to be incarcerated, we give the city an opportunity to increase its tax base. Um, it gives us a chance to provide for our families, which stops the trickle-down effect to our children. Uh, Band of Box is, is something that we feel is essential for people to grow. I mean, everybody, people, people make mistakes, and everybody deserves a second chance opportunity, but without employment opportunities, uh, even even the investments in reentry are, are wasted. But recently, Band of Box has been uh, passed in in Philadelphia, which I was a part of uh, the lobbying for for that bill to pass. In addition to that, it's been passed in several states, such as Massachusetts, Hawaii, and Minnesota statewide. And there's been several cities uh, that have passed Band of Box ordinances, allowing people opportunities to be employed. Pittsburgh is noted to be one of the best cities to live in in America, and I agree to to the fact that it, it potentially has the ability to be that, but it should be that for all people. People that have had past criminal histories that have turned their lives around deserve second chance opportunities to be law-abiding, tax-paying citizens, and a lot of us are capable of being leaders in our, in our communities as well as in this city. If you need more information about what Formerly Convicted Citizens Project is doing and want to support this effort, you can go to our website. And I can also be contacted at this email address and this phone number. For those of us that are citizens of the city of Pittsburgh, it would be much appreciated if you would contact your city councilman and let them know that you support Man the Box and that you feel this is essential for our city. In our contributed feature, the Fred Rogers Center wants to introduce you to LE. The Fred Rogers Center is proud to introduce the Early Learning Environment, or ELLI. ELLI is like a library and a playroom where you can find online and mobile educational activities that are fun to do with children up to five years old. 
It's also a place where you can easily find and use a variety of media to learn about helping children improve their language and reading skills. We encourage those who care for children to treat media more like they would treat a book, as a chance to sit with a child, share time together, and talk about what children are seeing and hearing. Joining the Ellie community is free and gives you great features like the ability to talk to others, save your favorites, and make activity playlists. Come join us at www.yourelly.org and we can work together to support children's learning and healthy development. Assemble's first annual fundraising event, Maker Day 2012, is an auction pairing skill seekers with opportunities to learn something new. This event will also feature a raffle of original art objects and homemade crafts. This event takes the concept of date auctioning and redresses it with a purpose. Maker Date will give attendees the chance to bid on dates with artists, crafters, or technologists who will work with the winning bidders to make a tangible or intangible object or teach them a skill. Want to be a feature maker? More information or how to apply is available at the address on the screen. Take a step for survival. Join KDKA TV news anchor and sudden cardiac arrest survivor Susan Copen on the Sudden Cardiac Arrest Foundation team at the Highmark Walk for a Healthy Community. Live outside Pittsburgh? No worries. Join the team virtually at the address on your screen. The Steel City Rowing Club officially moved into its new green facility in 2011. Last year, the building of a waterfront park began when an old industrial site was cleaned, graded, and seeded in native grasses. SCRC is now ready for the next phase of development, which includes planting native plants, trees, and shrubs this spring. Help us get started. In keeping with the SCRC Green mission, Steel City Rowing Club will host the Green Initiative Seminar Series Wednesdays, May 2nd and 9th, and Thursday the 24th. The final seminar will be held by sponsor American Native Nursery to kick off the Greener Garden Native Plant Sale May 25th and 26th, which serves as a fundraiser for the SCRC. Open planning at the Boathouse will be free and open to the public May 29th and 31st. All events will be held at the SCRC Boathouse located at 101 Arch Street in Verona, PA. More information is available at steelcityrowing.org. Well, now that the trains are going through, thanks for watching this episode of Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car. Any dudes f***ing mad cause they can't even find a day job. I stay hard with or without Viagra. And I said the flow crush like the force of Niagara. I'm after a major label budget, but since I'm not pop top 40, they all scared to touch it.